this week, God of War Ragnarok gets Steam Deck verified. Plus, several open source Steam Deck related projects make waves. And the big news this week, is Valve planning an ARM based handheld? Let's talk about it. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. Announced on their Twitter account and their Steam store page, God of War Ragnarok's developer Santa Monica Studio is boasting about the title receiving official Steam Deck verified status. Quote, We know many of you are eager to play God of War Ragnarok on the Steam Deck. We're happy to share that it is verified and available to enjoy on Steam Deck as we've worked extensively to optimize performance and deliver the best possible experience on this device. From all of us at Santa Monica Studio and Jetpack Interactive, we thank you for your support and enjoy. According to most of the reviews I've seen, it appears to be running at around 30 FPS on the deck, which is totally playable. Now, I haven't given this a try on my Steam Deck yet, mostly because of Sony's shenanigans and underhandedness recently, but I would love to know what you think of the game in the comments below. Next up, so Valve recently added an interesting feature to Steam, the ability to check out as a guest when purchasing the Steam Deck. This is a very neat feature and a smart move on Valve's part, especially if a parent or a relative wants to buy a Steam Deck for a kid and they don't have a Steam account. It's a good idea, at least in my book. So if you're a kid and you've been jonesing for a Steam Deck and nobody you know has a Steam account, now's your chance, let them know. So this is cool. There's a new update for EmuDeck and it's got some new features. Their terse update notes reads as follows. There's a new unified UI, there's now a button to remove Steam ROM manager entries in manage emulators, partial multi-language support, auto setup emulators on your device's language, Lime 3DS, which is a fork of Citra has been added, and Citra is back. They've added uh, Pablo MK7's uh, Citra fork. And there's now also Emudeki, which where you can update emulators from gaming mode, though you'll have to install it from Emudeck, not the Deki store. And I mean, man, I, I feel like every time I open up EmuDeck, the UI has just completely changed. So uh, hopefully this is like how it's going to be for the next little while, at least. Um, I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, but let me ask you a question. Do you enjoy these weekly Steam Deck and Linux gaming news videos? Why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos just like this. You can also get subscribed to stay up to date with everything that we're doing here. All right, now let's get back to the video. So Heroic Game Launcher just got a nice update that fixed a bunch of critical issues. Uh, and if you're not familiar, Heroic is a third party launcher that connects to various services like GOG, Amazon, Epic and others, and acts like a front end for Proton and other compatibility layers on Linux. It's a, it even works on Mac OS too. It's a great option if you're a Linux gamer and you have libraries on non Steam platforms. So what's new here? Well, they fixed the Amazon games library synchronization failure. They fixed the issues with Signy, All Guns Blazing, and Black Myth Wukong when played from Epic Games. And they fixed GOG cloud save issues when files were removed using the GOG uh, website. They also added some other fixes and upgrades here. I think that this is a terrific application that lets you play your non-Steam libraries on Linux and Steam Deck and it comes with my highest recommendation. I'm happy to see their continued progress here. It's available through Flathub and their GitHub page. There's gonna be a link in the description. All right, there's a new release of RPCS3 and it's got some new features and greater compatibility. Now, RPCS3 is the premier PlayStation 3 emulator and this release uh, improves online play. So let's take a look at what's new and the games that are newly playable on RPCN. So the list of games that are now confirmed working online include Armored Core 4, Outrun Online Arcade, Ridge Racer 7, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo HD, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD, Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection, The Punisher, No Mercy, uh, Top Spin 3, and Wangan Midnight. There's also uh, a bunch of games that have fixed scoreboards, including Crazy Taxi, Daytona USA, Gran Turismo HD, Hotline Miami 2, Ridge Racer 7, and Wrecked. Now it's really nice to see classic games getting this kind of online support so long after they went dark. And holy crap, did I just refer to PlayStation 3 games as classics? Man, I am getting old. <laughs> I'm gonna be 36 in November. Okay, so the biggest news this week has to be 
that of Valve Test App 3043620. This application was first reported on by SteamDB and shows that Valve are deeply in the throes of developing a way to play x86 Steam games on ARM devices. But what does that mean? Well, recall a few weeks back when I talked about how the Retroid Pocket 5 was not only able to run Android, but also Armbian Linux. The Pocket 5 is an ARM device, like your phone, and usually software compiled for desktop is incompatible with a phone or another handheld device. However, what Valve has got cooking here could mean that there could be a time when running the uh, Retroid Pocket 5 with Ubuntu or Arch or heck, even SteamOS would be able to play your Steam library of PC games. I mean, think about it. That would be enormous. That would unlock a huge library of games for you on the go. But how would they be achieving this? Well, much like Apple's transition from Intel to their in-house M-series CPU necessitated an emulator called Rosetta 2, this Valve test app includes an emulator called Fex. Fex is a free and open source emulator that compares itself to QEMU and uh, Box86. It's a fast x86 front end that's capable of forwarding graphics calls to the host machine, and it's a pretty exciting project overall. Also recall that Valve has been working on including Android app support with SteamOS, which we've talked about on the channel here. So if Valve brings this project to market, we're looking at a very interesting future for Steam. But it's worth asking the question, why? I mean, why would Valve be doing the heavy lifting here, porting PC games to ARM using an emulator? And why are they actually bringing Android apps to Steam? The simple and most tempting answer is Deckard. Valve's upcoming standalone VR headset that's meant to compete with the MetaQuest. And many reports have it that uh, Deckard is either exclusively ARM-based or it's a hybrid ARM slash x86 machine. Importantly, Valve's longtime commitment to PC VR has led to many VR enthusiasts amassing a library of VR titles that are locked to the PC. And meanwhile, the competition from Facebook, I'm never going to call them Meta, has been on ARM hardware and using a fork of Android for a while now, meaning that the development scene for VR has been split between the PC and ARM hardware. Now, if this assumption is correct, then Valve is trying to bridge the gap here and bring more openness to the commercial VR space. I love that. But there are many indicators here that point to this being only part of the answer. While there are many VR titles referenced in the Valve test app in question, there are also many traditional flat screen games, stuff like Left 4 Dead 2, which is Valve's canary release for pretty much every platform, including Linux. There's Gary's Mod and Shadow of Mordor, as well as many smaller indie titles, too. So speculation could lead us to conclude that there's an ARM powered Steam Deck in the pipeline, which could boast much improved battery life, among other benefits. Now, I'd be interested to see something like that in the future, especially if it had a dedicated GPU, so only CPU instructions would need to be emulated. I'm very curious to see how this would play out in terms of performance and what kind of drawbacks we would face from there, and if Valve would have the courage to call it a separate platform. But there's something else I think that we need to touch on here. Valve, probably, isn't just using FEX. What do I mean by that? Well, before Proton was publicly announced, there was speculation that Valve was funding the development of DXVK and some of the other software that Proton would rely on. Now, could Valve be funding FEX and Wadroid development? That remains to be seen, but there is ample precedence for it, and I wouldn't be surprised by it. And Valve puts their money where their mouth is when it comes to this kind of stuff, so that would be cool. Now, the details of the Valve test app in question have been wiped by Valve themselves. After the news broke, Valve seemingly locked it down. And re really what this means is that SteamDB can no longer scrape info and leak details that many uh, in Valve might not want the public to know about yet. This has happened many times over, and it's how we found that Valve was working on bringing Android apps to SteamOS. But also, like, this is kind of why covering Steam Deck news is so much fun, right? I mean, because Valve is so enigmatic. But what do you think they're up to? Let me know in the comments below. But anyway, I think that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you check out my Android apps on Steam Deck video that seemed to really resonate with folks. Thanks to my patrons for their continued support. And I'll see you guys next time.
diggity done.